another tunnel that way. There's another door there, and it just continues. <laughs> Deep beneath the earth, scientists have uncovered an ancient civilization that dates back thousands of years. The technology with drilling is you actually just have the drill bit at the end and moving. You force mud and other things down to keep this thing moving, and that's where it's, it's grinding away at the rock. And in between, you can take out the, the, essentially the shaft of rock, what we call the core, and look at the structure of the Earth. This discovery, made in one of the world's deepest holes, is shedding light on how people lived long before our modern cities. One, Kola Super Deep Borehole. The Kola Super Deep Borehole, located on the Kola Peninsula in Russia, is the deepest hole ever made by humans, reaching a mind-blowing depth of 40,230 feet. It was drilled by Soviet scientists over 22 years, starting in 1970. While the project wrapped up in 1992 and the borehole was eventually sealed in 2005, it remains one of the most fascinating achievements in Earth science, giving us a rare glimpse into the mysteries of our planet's crust. The idea behind drilling such a deep hole was to learn more about what lies beneath our feet. Scientists were curious about the Earth's crust, its structure, and how it behaves. They focused on the Baltic Shield, an ancient stable part of Earth's crust beneath the Kola Peninsula. By drilling so deep, they hoped to study the layers of rock, understand how heat travels underground, and test geological theories about how the crust transitions into deeper layers like the mantle. It was a groundbreaking project, literally and figuratively. As the borehole reached new depths, the scientists made some surprising discoveries. For one, they didn't find the Conrad discontinuity, a boundary between two types of crust that geologists thought should exist at a certain depth. Instead, they found granite extending far deeper than expected. Even more astonishing was the discovery of liquid water at such extreme depths. Until then, it was thought impossible for water to exist so deep. But the borehole revealed that water could get trapped within rocks under intense pressure. They also uncovered ancient microfossils, tiny remnants of life forms that were about two billion years old providing valuable insights into early life on Earth. Despite these incredible findings, the project faced numerous challenges. As they drilled deeper, the temperatures rose much higher than anyone had predicted. At those temperatures, the rocks became more like putty than solid stone, making it extremely difficult to drill further. The equipment frequently broke down, with drill strings twisting or snapping under the pressure. These technical and natural obstacles eventually brought the project to a halt in 1992. The Kola Superdeep Borehole wasn't just about science, it also reflected the competitive spirit of the Cold War. At the time, both the United States and the Soviet Union were racing to push the limits of exploration, whether it was outer space or deep beneath the Earth's surface. While the Americans had their own drilling projects, like the Moholy Initiative, the Kola borehole went deeper than anything before or since. 2. Indus Valley Civilization The Indus Valley Civilization, also called the Harappan Civilization, was one of the world's first great urban cultures, thriving thousands of years ago from around 2500 BCE to 1700 BCE. It was located in what is now Pakistan and parts of Northwest India, and is often compared to other ancient powerhouses like Mesopotamia and ancient Egypt. The IVC stood out for its incredible city planning, innovative architecture, and well-organized society, making it one of the earliest examples of advanced human civilization. The roots of this civilization can be traced back as far as 3300 BCE, when small villages began to take shape. By 2600 BCE, these settlements had grown into bustling urban centers, marking the mature Harappan phase, which lasted until about 1900 BCE. Over time, civilization began to decline, possibly due to climate changes, earthquakes, or invasions. This gradual downfall stretched into 1400 BCE, after which the thriving cities faded into history. Its major cities, like Harappa and Mohenjo-daro, were true marvels of the ancient world. These cities were home to tens of thousands of people, with Mohenjo-daro's population estimated between 23,500 and 41,050. Beyond these urban hubs, there were other important sites like Dolavira, Lothal, Kalibangan, and Rakagari, each contributing to the civilization's extensive network of settlements. What really set the Indus Valley cities apart was their meticulous planning and infrastructure. The streets were laid out in a grid-like pattern, 
crisscrossing at perfect right angles, a design we'd associate with modern cities. They also had some of the world's first advanced drainage systems, with covered sewers running beneath the streets, ensuring cleanliness and hygiene. Public structures like granaries for storing food and baths for communal use were common, with the Great Bath at Mohenjo-Daro being a particularly famous example. Most buildings were constructed using high-quality baked bricks, which showed their impressive skill in architecture and engineering. The Indus Valley people primarily relied on agriculture for their livelihood. They grew crops like wheat, barley, peas, dates, and even cotton, which they were among the first to cultivate. Alongside farming, they domesticated animals such as cattle, sheep, goats, and possibly chickens. Trade was also a big part of their economy, connecting them to distant regions like Mesopotamia. They traded goods like cotton textiles, beads, and metals, making them an important player in the ancient world's economy. Life in the Indus Valley was rich in culture, though many details remain mysterious because their script hasn't been deciphered yet. The seals they left behind, engraved with animals and symbols, give us hints about their society. These seals might have been used for trade, suggesting a standardized system of weights and measures. The people were skilled craftsmen, excelling in pottery, bead making, and working with metals like copper and bronze. Interestingly, unlike Mesopotamia or Egypt, the Indus Valley didn't have massive temples or palaces, which might mean their society was more egalitarian or organized differently. 3. Gobekli Tepe Gobekli Tepe, which means Potbelly Hill in Turkish, is one of the coolest archaeological sites in the world. Located in southeastern Turkey, it dates back to an incredible 9600 BCE, making it one of the oldest monumental structures ever discovered. Its existence has completely changed how we think about early humans, their societies, and even the origins of religion. The site was first noticed in 1963 during a survey, but no one understood its true importance at the time. That changed when Klaus Schmidt, a German archaeologist, started excavating it in 1994. What he uncovered was stunning, a collection of enormous stone structures built thousands of years before Stonehenge. Despite decades of work, only a small fraction of the site has been excavated so far, and each discovery adds more intrigue to this ancient mystery. What's remarkable about Gobekli Tepe is that it was built by hunter-gatherers, people who hadn't yet invented farming or established permanent settlements. This challenges the long-held idea that organized religion and complex societies only came about after agriculture. Instead, Gobekli Tepe shows that even before farming, humans could work together on massive projects, demonstrating a level of social organization far beyond what was once believed possible. These people gathered to build something extraordinary, possibly driven by spiritual or ceremonial motivations. The site itself is awe-inspiring. It features over 20 circular enclosures with massive T-shaped limestone pillars arranged in intricate patterns. Some of these pillars are as tall as 18 feet and weigh more than 16,000 pounds, which was amazing for people who didn't have the wheel or advanced tools. The pillars are also decorated with carvings of animals, like snakes, scorpions, and birds, which might have had symbolic meanings. The largest of these enclosures measure up to 65 feet across and are thought to have been roofed structures, adding to the complexity of the design. Gobekli Tepe is built in layers, with the oldest parts dating back to around 9600 BCE. These early sections include the largest and most elaborate circular enclosures, Later layers, dating between 8800 and 8000 BCE, show the addition of smaller structures. Strangely, the site appears to have been deliberately buried around 8000 BCE, possibly by the people who built it. This act of burying might have been a ritual in itself, or a way to preserve the site for future generations. Unlike other ancient sites, there's no evidence that people live there, no hearths, trash pits, or everyday tools. This suggests that Gobekli Tepe wasn't a settlement, but a place of gathering, likely for spiritual or ceremonial reasons. It might have been a kind of temple or pilgrimage site where nomadic groups came together for rituals, celebrations, or other communal activities. 4. Zhangxingdui Civilization Zhangxingdui, Aviv, Angkor Wat. Angkor Wat is the largest religious monument in the world and one of Cambodia's most iconic landmarks. Originally built as a Hindu temple dedicated to Vishnu, it later became a Buddhist temple, 
reflecting the region's shifting religious traditions. It was constructed during the reign of King Suryavarman Stu between 1116 and 1150 CE, serving not just as a temple, but also as a tribute to the king himself. It's a stunning mix of religious devotion and the incredible creativity of the Khmer Empire. Building Angkor Wat was no small task. It took over 30 years and an army of workers with around 300,000 people and thousands of elephants involved. Made mostly of sandstone, the temple was designed to represent Mount Meru, the sacred mountain at the center of the universe in Hindu and Buddhist beliefs. The central towers symbolize the mountain's peaks, while the surrounding moat represents the cosmic oceans. Everything about its design was carefully planned to feel harmonious and balanced, embodying the spiritual and architectural brilliance of the time. One of the most jaw-dropping features of Angkor Wat is its intricate carvings. The walls are covered with detailed bas-reliefs that tell stories from Hindu mythology, like the famous churning of the ocean of milk, where gods and demons join forces to create the elixir of immortality. The level of craftsmanship is unbelievable, and even after hundreds of years, the carvings still amaze visitors. Unlike most temples, which face east to greet the rising sun, Angkor Wat faces west. This unusual orientation has puzzled researchers, but some think it might have to do with its dual purpose as a temple and a funerary site for King Surya Varman II. 6. Herculaneum Herculaneum was an ancient Roman town located where the modern town of Ercolano, Italy now stands. It's often mentioned alongside Pompeii because both were buried during the massive eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD. While Pompeii was covered mostly in ash, Herculaneum was engulfed by pyroclastic flows, blisteringly hot surges of volcanic material, which preserved its buildings and artifacts in remarkable detail. Legend has it that the town was founded by the Greek hero Hercules, but historians believe it was actually established by the Oscans or Etruscans around the 7th century BCA. Over time, it came under the rule of different groups, including the Greeks and Samnites, before eventually becoming a Roman town in 89 BCE. Thanks to its prime coastal location, Herculaneum became a favorite getaway spot for wealthy Romans looking for a seaside retreat. When Mount Vesuvius erupted on August 24, 79 AD, it buried Herculaneum under around 66 feet of volcanic material in a matter of hours. This sudden burial effectively froze the town in time, preserving not just stone and marble structures, but also delicate items like wooden furniture, textiles, and even food. These remains offer an extraordinary glimpse into everyday life in ancient Rome. Herculaneum was rediscovered by accident in 1709 when someone was drilling a well. Systematic excavations began in 1738 under King Charles III of Bourbon, but the early digs were rough and sometimes caused damage. Later, more careful methods were used, leading to incredible finds like the Villa of the Papyri, a luxurious residence containing a library of ancient scrolls. These scrolls are still being studied today and may hold even more secrets about Roman life. What makes Herculaneum so special is how well-preserved it is. The heat from the eruption carbonized organic materials like wooden doors, beds, and food, leaving them intact for archaeologists to study. 7. Troy Troy, also known as Ilion, is an ancient city in what's now Hizirluk, Turkey. It's best known as the legendary setting of the Trojan War, made famous by Homer's Iliad and Odyssey. But Troy is much more than myth. It's a real place with a history that stretches back over 4,000 years. Archaeologists have uncovered layers of settlements at the site, each telling its own story about how the city grew, was destroyed, and rebuilt over the centuries. The earliest version of Troy popped up around 3600 BCE, starting small but growing into a significant city over time. The city went through at least nine phases of development, labeled Troy the Furs through Troy 9, with each layer showing how people lived, worked, and defended the city. One of the most famous periods is Troy Sevenya, which lines up with the time of the Trojan War described by Homer. Archaeologists found evidence of fire and destruction in this layer, which might match the war's dramatic end in legend. Over the years, Troy evolved from a simple fortified settlement to a wealthy city with strong defenses and active trade. By the time of Troy VI, it had become a major hub, but after the fiery end of Troy VII, it went through ups and downs. Greek settlers later revived it as Ilion, 
and it even saw a Roman-era boom before slowly fading out around the 6th century CE. Troy isn't just about mythology, though. It had a real role in ancient history. It even pops up in Hittite records under the name Wilusa, proving its importance in the region. But, let's be honest, the legends of the Trojan War, Helen of Troy, Achilles, and Hector, are what really keep Troy in the spotlight. These stories have inspired generations and are still a big part of our culture today. The modern rediscovery of Troy started in the 19th century, when a German archaeologist, Heinrich Schliemann, went digging. He was determined to prove Homer's tales were based on real events. Schliemann found some amazing artifacts, including gold treasures he thought belonged to King Priam. He wasn't entirely right about everything, but his work put Troy on the map for modern archaeology. 8. Kassarabe Culture Cities The Kassarabe culture was an important, but often overlooked civilization that thrived in the Amazon basin, especially in the Llanos de Mojos region of Bolivia. This culture existed between about 500 AD and 1400 AD, and was known for its impressive urban planning, unique architecture, and advanced way of life. The people of the Kazarabi culture managed to create a highly organized society that adapted to the challenges of living in a tropical savanna with seasonal flooding. The Llanos de Mojos, where the Kazarabi people lived, is a vast area that spans over 4,500 square kilometers. This region experiences flooding during certain times of the year, which could make permanent settlement tricky. But the Kasarabi people were able to use their knowledge of water management to build sophisticated systems of canals and reservoirs. These systems helped control the water flow during both the wet and dry seasons, allowing them to live and farm in an environment that might have been difficult for other cultures to settle in. When it came to building their cities, the Kasarabi people were known for their low-density urban layout, their settlements had a clear hierarchy, with large central hubs like Kotoka and Landivar, surrounded by smaller, more scattered villages. These central settlements were huge, covering areas larger than 100 hectares. The settlements were connected by a network of causeways and canals, making travel and trade easier between them. The Kasarabi people built impressive civic and ceremonial structures. They created large earthen platforms, conical pyramids, and U-shaped buildings, many of which were constructed on artificial terraces. These structures were often quite tall, reaching up to 20 meters or more, and were carefully aligned with the stars or other important cosmological directions. 9. Lost Golden City of Aten The Lost Golden City of Aten, also known as the Rise of Aten, is an ancient Egyptian city discovered near Luxor. It dates back to the time of Pharaoh Amenhotep III, who ruled around 1386 to 1349 BCE. This discovery is considered one of the most significant archaeological finds since the tomb of Tutankhamun. It has given historians and archaeologists a rare glimpse into life in ancient Egypt during one of its wealthiest and most powerful periods. The city was uncovered in September 2020 by a team of archaeologists led by Zahi Hawass, a well-known Egyptologist. Initially, they were searching for the mortuary temple of Tutankhamun, but instead, they stumbled upon an entire city that had been buried under sand for over 3,000 years. When the discovery was made public in April 2021, it revealed a large city remarkably well-preserved, offering an incredible opportunity to learn about ancient Egyptian life. Aden was built during the height of Egypt's 18th dynasty, a time when the country was at its peak it was a thriving city, serving as an important administrative and industrial center. The city continued to be used by later pharaohs, including Tutankhamun and his successor Ai. The city's discovery gives us valuable insights into the daily lives, culture, and economic activities of the ancient Egyptians during a time of great wealth and influence. The city itself is impressive in its layout. It includes several distinct neighborhoods, such as residential areas, administrative districts, and industrial zones. These industrial zones contain bakeries and workshops, showing how the city functioned in daily life. The city also features unique zigzag walls, a characteristic of its design. Many buildings are still standing, with some walls reaching heights of up to 10 feet. This level of preservation allows archaeologists to better understand how ancient Egyptians organized their cities and lived. Excavations have revealed artifacts that help paint a picture of life in a tent. Everyday objects like ceramic vessels, children's dolls, and game pieces have been found, 
which give us a sense of what people did for fun and how they lived. In addition, the remains of bakeries and kitchens show how food was produced, and one of the most notable finds was a large vessel containing over 20 pounds of dried meat, prepared by a butcher named Louis. The city also had workshops for making mud bricks and decorative items like scarab beetle amulets, jewelry, and colorful pottery. Some bricks even have seals of Amenhotep III, the pharaoh who ruled during the city's prime. 10. Daring Kuyu Daring Kuyu is an ancient underground city in the Cappadocia region of Turkey. Near the town of Daring Kuyu, the city goes down about 280 feet and could have sheltered up to 20,000 people, along with their animals and food. It is the largest underground city found in Turkey and is one of many similar cities in the Cappadocia area. The city's history goes back a long time. It was likely first built by the Phrygians around the 8th or 7th century BCE, though some think it might have started even earlier by the Hittites, around 2000 BCE. The city grew a lot during the Byzantine period, around 500 to 1000 CE. It was used as a safe place by Christians escaping attacks from Arab invaders. Daring Kuyu continued to be used as a hiding spot during wars, including by people running from Mongol invaders in the 14th century and during the Greco-Turkish War. Daring Kuyu stayed hidden until 1963, when a local man found a hidden room while renovating his house. This led to more digging, and researchers uncovered a huge underground city with tunnels and rooms. The city is built with several levels, at least eight, and some think there might be 11. Each level had a specific purpose, like places to live, storage, stables for animals, and spaces for prayer. One of the most interesting features of Daring Kuyu is its ventilation system. It had shafts that brought fresh air to all the levels. One of these shafts also worked as a water well, which was important for people living underground for a long time. There were also large stone doors that could be closed to block off sections of the city which helped keep people safe from invaders. Do you think there are other ancient civilizations that we haven't even discovered yet? Or maybe most of them have been completely forgotten?